Hey guys, what is up? And I welcome each and every one of you to a new League of Legends video. Big shout outs to Riot for kind of endorsing, I guess, this video from me. So season eight and ranked in League of Legends is on the verge of ending. There's only just a couple of weeks remaining, and I'm sure you're looking for that final push to try and get to whatever elo you're trying to get to. And you're looking for any possible way, any tips or tricks to help you achieve that elo, even coming from someone like myself being your favorite Diamond One player. So let's not waste too much more time. If you guys end up enjoying join this video then don't forget to hit that like button subscribe and all that good stuff but let's just get right into it and let's talk about the ways to improve and get to the elo you're looking for So the first thing I want to talk about is going to be a very general topic and it's going to be just the overall best roles and champions. Now first let me make sure that this is quite clear. Any role can get to any rank. That does not matter. It all just comes down to your personal skill in that role. But having said that, depending on the meta and the state of League of Legends, certain roles will tend to have, you know, a little bit of an extra or bigger impact throughout the game in general. For instance, right now, I believe a jungle, top, and maybe even mid lane are all very strong roles. Not only do they have champions that are just very impactful, but they're also roles where if you play them correctly, you can actually have a lot of impact around the map. And the overall bot lane, I believe, is probably the weakest role with ADC potentially being the weakest because it is extremely coin flip. Because usually as an AD carry, you don't have too much impact on the game until a lot later in, where by that time, I mean, usually the game can already be decided. However, as a support player, I feel like you actually have a decent amount of impact especially if you play the correct champions which we'll go into soon champions that can roam and that can impact the map and create a lot of pressure so if i were to rank the roles based on impact and just based on the overall carry potential the top three roles with number one being probably jungle then top lane then mid lane then support and then ad carry but again, don't use this as like a Bible. Again, this is just a rough kind of estimate you can look at. Again, personal skill is the number one trait. But moving into the next topic of this specific category, let's talk about the best champions in every role. Now this will change almost every single patch. And I will talk about something later down in the video where is it better to just play the meta champions or is it better to one trick? But at the moment and probably for the rest of the season, top lanes champions that are going to be impactful are either champions that are tanky and very strong at initiating, so for instance Scion instantly comes to mind, or champions that are bruiser and also can just have an insane amount of pressure, so essentially every champion that TF play plays, Akali, Irelia, Jax, Camille, even someone like Fiora. Those champions are insane when it comes to 1v1 split pressure, they're very very strong at it, they're all Triforce abusers, they're all very good at taking down towers, and they're also quite good and impactful within teamfights as well. They're just all around good champions. Moving into the jungle, now this one actually changes quite often based on the current meta. Evelyn was very strong, but she just recently got nerfed. So this one's a bit harder to say, but champions like Kha'Zix, champions like Graves, Elise, Talia, Zinn, Camille, Gragas, Kane, all of those champions in the jungle are consistently good and strong champions. And if you want to pick one of those up, I highly recommend it. Moving on to the mid lane. Now, mid lane is a little bit tricky also because there are different types of play styles. The one I recommend playing at the moment, if possible, is champions that also have high priority and high impact. Again, champions that are able to push in lanes and create pressure around the map. So, Talon comes to mind. This is also where Aurelion Sol is really good. However, Aurelion Sol is a very niche type of champion, so you either one trick him or you don't. Then you have champions like Ari that are just very good at almost everything. They have wave clear, they have CC, they have a lot of mobility, great damage. Twisted Fate also comes to mind, a great champion to one trick as well. Or you can play champions that just have high impact in the lane, so for instance, someone like Akali, someone like LeBlanc, or champions that are just strong in the meta, so in this case, being Cassidy. Moving down to the Bali, now this one is most reliant on the meta in my opinion, but the best ADCs at the very moment are champions like Lucian, champions like Jin, Ezreal, Kai'Sa, and Misfortune. All those champions are just consistently good and they're almost always within the top 5-ish of AD carries. And the final role is of course going to be for support. Now for support, I highly recommend you play either engaged support champions that have a lot of CC, so for instance Alistair or Leona, playmaking support champions that can also roam, but also Alistair, Pike, Thresh or Rakan, Blitzcrank. All of these champions are able to not only create a lot of CC, create great engages, but you're also able to run around the map with boots and mobility and create plays in other lanes, and that, in my opinion, is the most important thing for a support. On the flip side, if you're someone that's duo queue with an AD carry, or you just happen to trust your AD carry in the game for whatever reason, I personally think Lulu is the best kind of supporty support to play. 
But let's move on to the next topic. One tricking champions versus playing meta champions. A very, very big topic to talk about. So the short answer is I believe one tricking is almost always a better than playing meta champions, but again, not always. So when it comes to one tricking champions, obviously that means you pick a role. So for instance, mid lane and you pick a champion. So for instance, let's say Zed and you play that champion almost always. You never play anything else unless for whatever reason, maybe the champion's banned. But the thing about one tricking is the fact that you'll have so much information, so much knowledge about that champion. You'll have so much knowledge on matchups, your damage output, what you can do against every champion in the game, because there are so many champions now, that almost always you should have more knowledge as to how the game can progress and what you can do than almost anyone else in your current game, just because you only play that one champion. You know everything there is to know. My number one advice when it comes to climbing based on the champions that you play and all that stuff is this. Pick a role, pick three champions that you only play and only play those three champions in that role. So mid lane, let's say Zed, Talon, Azir for instance, but have one of them being your top play champion. And then the other two being your fallback champions. Again, if there's a ban, if maybe the matchup is better, etc. And for your secondary role, have maybe, you know, two or three champions as well for that role that you can play at least consistently well and be at least somewhat useful. In my opinion, that's the best way to climb. The other option is of course, playing meta champions, just whatever is strong in the meta, you just play that, you hop on the bandwagon and so on. This way can also work for sure but it just comes down to your personal skill and knowledge of League of Legends how long you've been playing how fast you can learn and all that it is a lot more difficult but it can also be a lot more rewarding if you end up doing the meta routes but you actually do it successfully because certain champions are naturally just better than other champions based on the meta there are champions that are stronger in certain patches of League of Legends that is a fact but again, for the average person, I recommend you literally one trick a champion or at the very least try to pick three champions for a specific role that you play and play nothing but those three champions. Now, next thing I want to quickly talk about is a league settings. Now, some people ask others, you know, what's your mouse setting? What's your speed, sensitivity, blah, blah, blah. All of that doesn't matter. The only thing that I highly recommend you do is number one, maybe have some hockeys that help you kind of press maybe item slots a little bit faster, or maybe on your mouse or something like that. That can make your overall reaction time just overall faster, which is important. Number two is smart casting. I think smart casting is also very important. Especially if you're playing someone like Irela, you want to be able to use those abilities as fast as humanly possible, and smart casting helps you with that naturally. Also, I highly recommend having your minimap setting at the largest possible size, and also turn on timestamps for your chat. Very important. Now let's talk about another topic that a lot of people, including myself, experience on a daily basis. Tilt. What do you do with tilt? How do you overcome it? I feel like tilt needs no introduction. Dude, what the fuck, man? Where are you? Tyler! The best way to even avoid tilt to begin with is play a set amount of games. Don't just grind mindlessly. For instance, just play maybe three or four games, you know, and then if you lose three games in a row, if you lose two games in a row, and if you just feel like you're mad, you just feel like you're upset, you're tilted, take a one hour break, stand up, go walk around, get some fresh air, get a glass of water or something. But if you limit yourself to, let's say, three games per session, you'll be able to better understand whether or not you're tilted, and you won't force yourself to play unnecessary games. So that's the number one thing, and if you feel the tilt coming on, the best thing, I promise you, take a break. Another thing that you can do to avoid tilt is just mute all in chat. Literally mute every single damn person in your game because there's a good chance none of them have anything productive or useful to say to winning the game. Mute them, save yourself the headache, save yourself your brain cells, and just save yourself from being tilted. But that right there is about the best way to not only avoid tilt, but if you do get tilted, the way to just overcome it as well. But speaking of being tilted, let's talk about dodging. Dodging is something that is extremely important and I promise you it's almost like a skill that you have to develop in order to climb in League of Legends. Whenever you dodge for the first time within a day when it's about an 18 hour reset, you only lose 3 LP, but the biggest part is you don't lose your MMR, which is the hidden rating. That's what really matters, whether or not you know you demote, whether or not you gain more LP than you lose, etc. You lose 3 LP and nothing else. And the best way to determine whether or not you should dodge is actually quite simple. You look at your team using something like OP.GG, stats them up, look at everyone's role and the role that they're actually playing in, look at their main roles, and just see how many autofill players do you have on your team. The less, of course, the better. But also, some roles are more important than others when it comes to autofill. For instance, if your jungler is autofill, that's pretty bad. I would consider a dodge. But also, see where they're autofilled from. For instance, having a support player autofilled into the jungle, that's probably going to be a loss if the enemy team has an actual jungle main. If your team comp is not looking great and the enemy team has better champions in slot, you know, champions that are just naturally considered to be very strong for the current meta, you may consider a dodge. If your team has no CC but the enemy team has 
CC everywhere also might consider a dodge. And if someone on your team is on a massive loot streak and it seems like they're just playing quite poorly, also might consider a dodge. But speaking of stacking people up and using OP dodge EG, let's talk about that next because that is also really important. Whenever you go into a lobby, copy paste the whole lobby where it says X player has joined the lobby, put that into OP dodge EG's search engine and it'll give you a quick rundown of how the stats look like for every single person on your team. That'll help you determine who's on their main role, who's on their second role, who's auto filled, what champions did they play, did they pick the correct champions that they actually know how to play. It'll give you everything you need to know, who's a smurf, who's not a smurf. And when you go into the game, especially if you're a jungler, you can stats up the enemy team as well. You can see who's on tilt, who's playing poorly, who's auto filled, and it'll help you determine which lanes to actually focus on and which lanes to gank as well. All super vital information. Hopi.gg is extremely important to use when climbing in rank, so promise you, you must use it and you will see success. And the final topic I wanted to discuss is going to be just if you're really just dedicated to improving climbing and all that stuff and you want to do whatever it takes, replace this is the most work it takes a lot of work to do this i don't do this myself either even though i should because i'm just too lazy but going over your replays you play the game whether you won or lost go over the replay watch everything follow your actions see what you did write down what you did the good things the bad things what you could have done better where you died why did you die what could you have done to avoid that death maybe you missed a kill maybe you lost a team fight maybe you lost a certain objective look at everything and figure out what you could have done personally to improve that and increase the chances for your team to win and increase your overall personal performance and you can write all that down in a notepad and as long as you do this consistently with almost every game if you even want to with the replays it'll all kind of get into your memory subconsciously and then when you play your future games you'll have all of this information in the back of your head and believe it or not subconsciously without even realizing it it will actually change the way you play the game it will change the decisions you make throughout the game usually of course hopefully being for the better and you will just overall see yourself playing better getting more impact in the game and just seeing yourself climb and it's going to feel damn rewarding but that right there guys is going to be about it for this video there you have it a bunch of tips to get that final push for your rank that you're looking for whether it's silver whether it's gold platinum diamond masters challenger whatever that is going to be the way you do it again it all just comes down to you as a person you as a player how much time do you invest into league of legends if you follow these tips and i probably should follow them as well you will see yourself climb i promise you and here's a quick tldr rundown play the role that you like enjoy playing the most that's the number one thing or play a role that you believe is the strongest but don't switch roles too often because it'll be hard to keep relearning every single role whichever role that you decided to play pick three champions with one of which being your main primary champion only play those champions as well and nothing else if you're tilted take a one hour break play on sessions play three games per session and see how those three games went if you're feeling good continue playing make sure your minimap is the biggest setting it could possibly be turn on timestamps for league of legends as well and nothing else really matters other than maybe just better better hotkeys. Use OP.GG to stats up your allies and champ select, see who's autofilled, see who's on their main role, who seems to be the better players, who seems to be trolling and picking champions they don't know how to play, and if something doesn't look good, dodge, because dodging is super important. You only lose 3 LP for the first dodge every 18 or so hours, and that's it. You don't lose MMR, and that's the important part, the MMR. And the final thing is, of course, look through your replays, look at what you've done, look what you can improve on, and that will help you subconsciously get better at League of Legends. But either way, guys, that is is it for this video there you have it a bunch of tips to help you get that final rank i hope it has been a help and uh yeah i just hope this video was useful i hope it does help you as well and good luck on the rift boys and girls thank you for watching if you did enjoy hit the like button subscribe if you haven't check out my other videos as well and i'll